Maya. In the time of the Olympian gods, in the early years of their reign on Mount Olympus, Zeus and Hera ruled, their court full of family, aunts, siblings, and children. This tale begins with Zeus, as many often do. And I, I am the child of the Titan god, Atlas, he who holds the skies on his shoulders. My mother, the Oceanid Peony, bore him seven daughters, the seven nymphs of constellation. I am the eldest of the Pallades. I am Maya. Seldom found at court, we nymphs live in the caves on the great mountain Selene. We dance amongst the stars, far from Olympus, when all the palace were asleep. He wooed me in the dead of night. Zeus would come to our mountain and whisper sweet words. My sisters fawned over him, all far braver and bolder than I. But he set his eyes on me, coaxed me from my shy shell, made me feel understood, special. I could not help what we did next, for it was freedom for the first time. Fire and lightning in a secret cave. And in the cold afterward, he warmed me in his arms, held me close, kissed me quick, and returned before a soul could stir. Back to his palace, his court, his queen. I slept, but a miracle woke me. Great pain and a swollen belly, for a child had grown overnight. I screamed with the break of dawn light. And as Apollo began his daily journey, the sunlight crested to hit his tiny head. My son, in the dirt at first, wriggling. He seemed to shimmer before me, a halo of golden light from within, shone out of his skin and faded, as if shining only inward now, out of sight, but still present, the power of Zeus. I took him into my arms, wrapped him with soft blankets, and drew Hermes close to my chest. That morning a delight woke me, but that evening would bring something else entirely. As impossible as this tale will seem from me, I shall let the boy explain his first day in the world, and the mischief he got up to. For I knew not, as I rested into the late morning, I thought my newborn son would sleep in his swaddled blankets and rest. Hermes. But I, Hermes, grew tired and bored quickly, so I slipped from the caves and amused myself. It was easy to slip from the blanket, as my mother was tired from my sudden arrival. The cave was too quiet, and I had been patient long enough, I thought. The world was what I needed, and so I went. The dazzling light, lush greenery, beauty beyond compare. Easy to say when you have nothing to compare it to. Everything is new, everything is dazzling, for it is all more fresh. The dawn of my first day was like no other. The first creature I saw was a winged hawk. Though I did not know the name at that moment, I knew it was a bird somehow. The more I saw of this world, the more I felt of the power. The other realms and realities you can experience and affect as a god. I seemed to know things and learn things quickly just by being. I watched the hawk fly through the changing skies until my eyes drifted. 
Godly eyes able to see a ram high atop a mountain, climbing under an orange glow, I walked out of the cave into the lush wilderness, gazing and admiring, learning and moving on to the next new thing. I spied a tortoise next and took it in my hands, blessing the strange creature so curious as to know what was inside. I could not help myself as I saw its shell, for so many possibilities popped into my mind. And though my hands be small, my strength, I did not know then as I know now. It passed in my small fists, but I scooped out the innards, brain racing with ideas. With the shell now cleaned and hollow, I fixed it with seven strings of reed, in honor of my mother and her sisters of star. The perfect instrument to express my joy in that moment. I had created the lyre. Tuning the strings with makeshift parts, strumming tunes as the midday sun shone on my face, I wrote my first song as I continued my wandering. My eyes and ears had not seen enough then. I don't believe they ever will, in fact. I walked on and on until the sky began to change once more. No longer heating my skin, the cool breeze brought a chill to the air. I stopped for a moment to admire the horizon. Humming my tune, I spotted a herd of the most glorious creatures. Grazing in the grass with such size and weaponry upon their head, but these cows, with horns and hooves, were not ordinary cows, my friends, for there was an otherworldly shimmer to them. Such a thing only a god can see, a creature touched by the divine. Then I saw the guard dogs, four of them, at different corners of the field. They seemed to move and think as one, stalking around the bovines in a neat line, and turning forty-five degrees and stalking on. Marching round and round in a tight square, vigilant and prepared. The field beside them, sleeping in a great dark heap with huge horns and a great golden ring in his nose. A bull. I put my lyre away as I had stopped playing at the sight of the sleeping herd. The scenery, although beautiful, had soon lost its charm. But the sight of these creatures... <laughs> I walked towards them, itching for a challenge, for some fun. I watched to see if the shepherd to this important herd does as diligent a job as his dogs, but he does not. No shepherd or any other soul in sight. A golden opportunity such as this cannot be ignored. I held out my hand, unsure of how to proceed. But knowing my desire, my goal, I took out my lute and began to play slow and languid chords, soft and sleepy, inviting. I put all my might, all my will into the song, and the dogs around the field, their ears perked up, but they marched on. I played, and they began to bob their heads, their paths of motion wobbling. I played on and they began to stagger. I played on, and they are crashed in heaps around the field asleep. As I conclude my song, I whisper my hope that they remain silent. From there, I play for the herd, and from their sleep they rise, their hooves keep clopping in time to the sound of my strumming strings. Mesmerized by the music, they began crowding toward me. I took a step back and another, making room for the many beasts, surprised by their sudden compliance and their enormous size. I looked down to steady my wobbling little legs when I saw the prints in the mud, my footprints. They looked as if I had walked towards them. Strange. And theirs, the great cow's mighty hoof prints, protruding from the mud. A genius plan came to me then, 
for I used the tools around me, the earth beneath my feet. I fashioned sandals of mud and reeds, light as a feather, but a trick hid in their shoes. For I, with my godly powers growing by the hour, I touched my godly energies and transformed the sandals so that they would show my footprints backwards on the ground. I played my lute, and with my humming tune the cows marched, yet I performed the same charm to confuse any who would search for them later. For how can anyone follow a trail that leads to their very home? <laughs> Over fields, rocky stone and sands by the shoreline, I marched my stolen herd. Onward into the lands further, we passed vineyards, and there I saw an old man tending to his grapevines, watering the plants in the cool evening air. He looked up from his work and walked with confused, prying eyes toward me. That old man could scarce believe his eyes, but with a few cunning words, we struck a bargain. He swore his lips would be sealed. None shall know of what he had seen. And I promised him a great reward for this, for his silence. And onward into the night, past trees and rivers, up to caves not far from my own, I stashed my prize cows and crept back to the Mount Silene. I tried my very best to contain my joy, the rush of winning a prize, of taking what was deserved. When we got to the cave of their hiding, I sacrificed two. One I burnt in honor of the gods of Olympus. The next I burnt in honor of my mother and myself. As I hurried home, I hoped my mother would still be sleeping after the labor. It would be easy to slip back into my crib and curl into the blankets, and she would be none the wiser. A dim light shone from the cave entrance. But I was not asleep. Was I, Hermes? No, you were not, Mother. Yes, I caught him skulking into our home long past dusk, and the joy I felt at seeing him unharmed was overshadowed by my fear. My fear of losing him, that something terrible had happened to my newborn son. For when I awoke to find the crib empty, I wept and wallowed, thinking the worst. He scared me half to death. But I thought of his father, Zeus, of my father, Atlas, of the might of the godly power in our blood. So if he were alive and out there, in the world, what if he had been found out? What if she had found out? Hera, the queen of the gods, wife to Zeus. She would not be kind to him. I worried desperately and searched the mountain, praying he had not gone far. But I went back to the cave at sunset, having not found clue of where he might have gone. I hoped he would find his way home if I lit a candle. Then when he finally did come home, I heard the noise of a hundred cattle with him. The relief turned to fear, and the fear was clouded into a rage. My love a deadly fuel onto the fires. I screamed at him, for what he had done, this risk, the foolishness in his actions. He did not know the power of the people that would do him harm to know of his very existence, to go out before he had time for me to teach him anything, to steal and from a god, his half-brother of all people. For he does not know that the son of Leto, Apollo, 
is the rightful shepherd. He holds the title. He holds the caduceus. It was given to him by Zeus and cannot be stolen in the night. And now they shall come. And in that moment, I vent all of my worry and frustration into mighty shouts at my tiny, naive son. But oddly, he just stands there, staring up at me. He smirks a little and climbs into his crib. I sigh and collapse in the chair beside it. I stroked his hair as he lay down, and we sat in silence for a moment. I said to him, I am sorry, just, I worried for you, my son. I am perhaps hasty in my plans, mother, for I am just a newborn child after all, and even I fear your disappointment in me. But I did not mean to worry you so. In fact, my plan means you can worry less in future, for I mean to provide for us. We cannot stay as we are, mother. This cave, it is our home, but it is so small. It shall soon become a prison to us both. I do not wish this to be for both our sakes. I know you fear the other gods and my father, but why should we hide away whilst they get Everything. Sacrifices, Ambrosia, honor and renown. Is it not better to live with the deathless gods in shadows, but with wealth and riches, than dwell and cower in a cave, mother? I knew these to be the cattle of Apollo, and I doubt he will ever find me. But I long for more, mother, and if father will not recognize me, then there are other ways. For I have proven today I may be a prince of robbers. I shall steal the riches we are owed, and we shall live a life of plenty yet, my mother. Just you see. I sighed at the dreams of the child, and worried of the wrath of the Olympian court. I stroked Hermes's little head, admired his bright eyes and golden hair, and sang a song to him, to lull him to sleep. But I could not sleep myself that night, for I knew Apollo was no fool. I had no power to stop any of them, and he would be coming. Apollo It is true. I am no fool. I am the god Apollo, son of Zeus and Leto. And I noticed the theft when I returned to my post that night. I had been called away by other matters that day that I lost my herd. In the late night, I found the empty field where my cattle should have been. But a cluster of sleeping dogs and a single lone bull were all that could be found. I scoured the area and quickly found tracks. But they were all pointed leading toward the field. They were new tracks, but could not have been the way they had been wandered. As I inspected the dogs waking from their slumber, they rushed around the fields. They opened and shut their mouths, straining as if barking but no noise came out at all. They had somehow forgotten how to bark. Now unable to do so, they whined and ran about. I calmed them and followed the tracks. Across fields, sands and rocky lands, their tracks faded as the lands shifted. I lost the trail fully near fields full of grapevines. I transformed myself now perceptible to the mortal men scattered around in the dawning light. I found an old mortal man looking me up and down as I approached. I asked his name, and he replied, Batos. I pleaded to him, 
explained all I knew about my lost herd, and the old man told me a fascinating tale. And though his eyes were getting worse, he swore he had not been mistaken, for he had seen a baby lead my herd away. It was in the rising dawn light I saw an eagle with my godly vision, hundreds of miles away on the horizon. I saw it fly above a mountain. I thanked old man Batos for his knowledge and kindness, and sped my way to the mountain. For I knew then that the bird had been an omen, a sign, a clue. Am I not the god of these? For an answer to the mystery of who stole my cows. For the eagle is my father's sign and an omen. There is another child of Zeus in the world, already causing mischief. I needed my herd back, but there are many ways to deal with a thief. Apollo came through our threshold in morning light. Hermes slept peacefully at a glance. I knew he was just playing his part and listening. I spoke to the mighty god as his eyes set their angry gaze upon the boy in the crib. Before he could approach, I spoke to him. My lord, we did not expect the honour of your calling to Mount Selene. But... He only glanced at me for a moment before he stepped past me to loom above the crib. Tell me where my stolen herd is, child, or we shall quarrel immediately. Do not try to trick me or lie, son of Zeus, or I shall cast you into Tartarus for your crimes. Your mother, not your father, would be able to bring you back to the light, boy. So tread lightly with me. Take me to the herd. Return them to me. And we shall make peace. My son Hermes is but a newborn babe, my lord. I birthed him myself yesterday. He could not do what you accuse him of. But he ignored me entirely. Apollo leant back and made room for the boy to step out of the crib. But Hermes shucked his blanket from his face and raised a hand. He opened his mouth and I thought he would smash his fist into his mouth and play the innocent babe. But before I could stop him, he spoke. I was born yesterday. I am but a child. How could I have done any of what you say? Are you accusing a child in his crib of stealing your divine cattle, my lord? Apollo barked out, laughing, for Hermes betrayed himself by speaking at all. But the patience of Apollo was thin, as Hermes proclaimed in greater detail his innocence. The fool. As I attempted to step between the two, Apollo beat me to the crib and scooped up the babbling babe Hermes. He made for the door, proclaiming the matter to be settled with a higher authority if he would be so uncooperative. If only... My child had kept his mouth shut, and they were gone before I could lift a finger. To Zeus and to Mount Olympus, they both went. When Apollo arrived, he stepped through the threshold into the great palace of Olympus, with a babe in his arms, and the court was aghast with whispers. He marched to the throne, and proclaimed my son a thief, a liar, and a trickster. And he admitted that Hermes was a son of Zeus himself. Silence fell over the court of Olympus. Apollo told the tale of his guard dogs and their stolen voices, how they cannot bark again. They 
have forgotten how. The backwards tracks left behind as he found his herd stolen. The lone bull left sleeping, a taunt in his face. And the witness, Batos the old man, who stated seeing Hermes commit the crime himself. And Hermes, well, Hermes could not help but jump up and defend himself, as he proclaimed himself to speak only truth. That the mighty Apollo, the liar that he be, burst into our cave at dawn, threatened to throw him into Tartarus. All for cows he had never heard of or seen. For he was born yesterday and had not even left his home before that day, that very morning. And Zeus, he saw through the lies of the child, for he was not born yesterday. But as he saw the tricks and mischief of his newborn son, he could not help but laugh. Hermes screamed to Apollo at hearing this. He threatened the older god and promised he would make his future painful if he lived past this tale. And Zeus laughed harder. He ordered the return of the herd to its rightful owner with a smile on his face insisting that they both go and fetch the herd together. With great mercy, he announced that once the wrong had been righted, they should both return to Olympus. Hermes The journey between Apollo and I began with snipes at one another, trudging through the wilderness after a ruse gone wrong, next to a man who hated me. I soon got bored. Luckily, I trapped my liar to my shoulder, under blankets as he carried me. I took it out and began to play. I did not notice it at first, but Apollo had begun to watch me closely. His face could not help but soften, bobbing his head to the music, so as we walked, I strummed the song I had been working on. First the chords, and then the melody. But now, I had the lyrics finished and ready for my first performance. We followed the backwards cattle tracks, and I sang of the muses and of their mother, Menemazine, to honor them. And then I sang of the nothing of the universe, of before it was created. But then, the first god, Chaos. I sang of the primordials that followed, the titans after them. I sang of the triumph of the Olympians. I sang of my father and my mother, and of my life, although short it may have been. As I finished the flourishes of the strings of my flute, I felt as if I awoke and we had arrived at the herd. Only... Apollo was staring at the instrument, a tear in his eye. He asked me how I could have created such beauty, to express in such a way what gifts I had. And then he stopped. He saw the burned embers of two of his divine cattle, and I froze. He sighed, but he looked at me. Well, he glanced at me, but stared right back at the instrument. I asked him then if he wanted to make a deal. My loot and the inspiration that comes with it in exchange for the herd of cattle and the responsibility, duty and titles that come with it. He shook his head and took the loot, asking of me to show him my song. It would be the first he would master and spread around the lands. Apollo and I have been good friends ever since, for he has desired other things I have created, so perhaps other bargains have been struck. But that day, I earned the first of many titles to come. But when Apollo and I went back to Olympus, Zeus wore a smile on his face 
as he officiated the transfer of power. I became shepherd of the divine herd, but in time I became so much more, just as I had wanted. Zeus made me his herald, messenger of the gods, god of boundaries, and I aid the realm of Hades. I bring the souls of mortals to the realm itself. One of the few gods that can come and go from the underworld, mortal realms and Olympus, as I please. I am a protector of merchants, but the robbers are also under my aid, of course. I serve many roles in this world. Armed with my caduceus and my winged sandals, if these are the roles I must play to be in the light amongst my family of might, I will satisfy that need. I would be lying if I said I did not enjoy all I do. But I wonder if they keep me so busy because they are afraid of what I could do if I were not. And the old man Batos. I did not forget. With new position, I took my revenge for his betrayal. But that is a tale for another time. Living mythology is our attempt to bring the stories of our ancestors back to life. They explained their universe through the medium of their religions. Their gods were not distant beings of academic study. They were living, breathing entities that reflected the wants, needs, good and evil in the very heart of humanity. We only wish to encourage others to study the deep and rich cultures of our forebears. We hope you have enjoyed our labors. If so, then do consider liking and subscribing. If you wish to support improvement in our endeavor, then we do have a patron as well. Until next time, be good to all, but most especially yourself.